Hey everyone, Matt Jordan with Reverb.com here. I'm with my friend Janice Wallen. She's going to demonstrate some bass lines and we're gonna talk about five ways to record your bass guitar. Now, the first and simplest way to record an electric bass is using something called a DI box, like one of these, the LR Bag Stadium Electric Bass DI, which we're gonna be trying out today. This is a small device that just takes your instrument level signal and allows you to plug into line level devices like interfaces or recording consoles. These go from the low price range of you know around $80 to $120 with things like the Radial JDI, all the way up to things like the Avalon U5 and the A-Designs Red DI, which are much more pricey but with bigger feature sets for serious players. You'll see these kinds of devices all over the place, not only because they're consistent and sound the same across multiple systems, but recording engineers love to rely on them as a redundancy tool in case you mic up a bass cabinet and later you discover that your signal was not as optimally recorded as possible. DI boxes have a reputation for being a little flat and lifeless. If you find yourself in a situation where you want a little bit more control over your tone on the way in, consider a preamp like this one from Universal Audio. This is the Solo 610. As you can see, there's a built-in DI here and a through right there on the front panel for your convenience. There's also some more affordable options available on Reverb like the Focusrite ISA-1 or the entire line of Sans Amp bass preamps from Tech 21. Now, another great option for recording bass is getting yourself an audio interface like this one that has instrument inputs, as you can see here on the front panel of the Axe.io from IK Multimedia. The great thing about these guitar-specific interfaces is you're going straight into a computer, you can skip the DI box, you can skip the preamp, those are both built in here. And once you record things through this thing, there are great amounts of modeling software that you can use nowadays that recreate the tones of vintage and modern guitar and bass amps. There are a ton of great interfaces on the market nowadays that come prepackaged with amp modeling software to get you that classic guitar bass amp sound going straight into your interface. These include the entire Apollo series from Universal Audio, as well as the more affordable option, the Sono from Audion. Let's talk about the most classic way to record a bass guitar or really any source using microphones. Here I have the Shure Beta 52A. It's a dynamic mic specifically designed to capture the low frequencies in bass drums all the way down to 20 hertz, uh, which actually makes them very well suited to record bass guitar as well. So let's check that out. All right, another very popular microphone for recording bass is the M88TG from Bayer Dynamic. This is a hypercardioid dynamic microphone, which makes it especially good for situations where you're playing with a full live band in a studio, if you really need that bass signal isolated, but you still need all that low end thump, this is a great option for you.
Another classic type of microphone to record bass, especially when you need a little bit more detail on the top end, is any large diaphragm condenser mic. Today we're going to test out the KSM32 from our friends at Shure. Now, those are just a few great options for recording bass guitar with a microphone. Some other great options are the SM7B from Shure and the RE20 from Electro Voice. But as always, try as many microphones as you can, work with what you have. Um, if it sounds right, it is right. Another super common practice for recording bass nowadays amongst engineers and producers alike is using a DI box and taking a mic signal from a bass amp simultaneously. Now, most DI boxes will have this jack called a through jack. This is the radial JDI. It's a great passive direct box. This device allows you to plug your bass in there, take this balance signal out into your DAW or your recording console to your tape machine to get that DI'd signal. And then out of this through jack, you can go to your amp so that you can capture the DI signal and the mic'd signal simultaneously. Not only is this a really great tool for a safety net for redundancies for recording engineers, but it also allows you to get really creative when you're blending the DI signal and the mic signal together. So there you have it, five different ways to record your bass guitar. Thanks again to Janice for joining us today. We will see you next time.